Welcome to the Wavell Star Show. I'm your host, the First Nation Sensation Wavell Star, coming to you with another edition of Quarantine Talks. Today we have from the Saskatoon Public School Division, Donnie Spadell. Donnie, how are you doing today, man? Oh, very good, Wavell. It's uh, good to hear you. It's uh, quite an honor to uh, hear hear from you. It's been a it's been a few months. It's been a while, hasn't it? And especially through this uh, this weird time that we're going through right now, this pandemic. Uh, so let's start off with that. Uh, what what are your opinions right now uh, about uh, the things that are happening uh, regarding the pandemic, and and what do you, uh, how do you see this uh, impacting the indigenous community right now? Well, you know, uh, you know, I guess those that have uh, been attached or have been participating in ceremony for, you know, a number of years, or that you know have uh, spiritual leaders or attachment to to elders and such. Uh, you know, these things were kind of prophesized and foretold. Many of us didn't know the the magnitude, though, of what we would see. And, um, you know, we're now experiencing that. And, and it's, um, you know, it's it's breathtaking. And, and it's taken a lot of people um, uh, to reestablish and to re, uh, refocus uh, exactly how, how they want to go about life and what what is important you know and, and i think uh, ultimately in this uh, you know we're learning that uh in all of this it's it's, a, it's about family you know it's about it's it's about uh, maintaining uh, the focus and so uh, i um those are some of my take-homes from this right now and of course as it relates to my professional job you know yes uh, students are are um you know it's, it's going to be a lot of work to to help students so there isn't uh, a learning uh, leg or gap uh, for students, but I know uh, for those that are able to have on online learning, or for those that are uh, you know enthusiastic at home on the home front to do home learning, it, it, you know that's the best thing you can do for the for the young people and and anyone in general. I mean, everybody's just trying to keep busy, but uh, I think reading and and those those types of things, of course, will help. Absolutely, for sure. There's, you know, the, this is really affecting the Indigenous community in so many ways. And, uh, and then, like you mentioned, it, it's it, it also affecting the careers and uh, daily lives of, of so many people. So I think it's important uh, to really bear down and do whatever we can to get through this time. Uh, what type of things are you doing personally to get through this time? Well, you know, um, I, you know, it's just been, like I said, you know, family has been, uh, just a chance to to reconnect with family and and just to um, you know sit with my daughters uh, every day and just you know live live life with them. It's been great and and um, you know of course you know here on the home front you know just just trying to do the chores, some of the things that you don't get a chance to do because you're on the go all the time. A lot of crafting, you know. We're doing beadwork. We're doing uh, of course daily smudging, prayer. Uh, you know, every now and then we're singing, we're sharing songs. Uh, my girls like to sing uh, ceremony songs and such, so we've been doing that, you know. And and of course, FaceTime is a, is a great thing, you know. Reaching out to, you know, my mom and you know some of the other relatives that are, uh, you know, in, in other parts of the world. Uh, just, you know, we're trying to link out to them. So yeah. Okay, so uh, you're also a renowned uh, Powell MC throughout Powell country. Uh, how do you see this impacting the world of Powell? And when do you see things? Uh, I guess returning to normal. Geez, you know the the forecast of normal. Who knows right now? But uh, you know we're we're really trying to. Um, I think in regards to you know a lot of the the power MCs and others have been doing this social distance power and uh, you know some of the other MCs we've got online and we've did some funny things like a toilet paper challenge and you know the the gals were doing the uh, makeup brush challenge and all that. So we did. We did a toilet paper one and hey, just kind of do stuff out of the norm. I'm, I've never really been a social media guy, but I've, I haven't been on social media so much in the last few weeks here. So it's, it's interesting. Yeah, for sure. I think people are really using that right now to try and keep that uh, human engagement, right? Because everybody is so isolated uh, that it's, uh, you know, it's really tough to, uh, to connect with people for sure. And I, in regards to gatherings, you know, I, I hope, uh, in, in you know maybe by midsummer or end of summer maybe we can maybe we can go back to having some outdoor gatherings and such. I I um it, it would be great. You know I think people just for you know just for well being and just 
part of tradition and custom, you know, is to, to be with our people. I mean, this is really unnatural to be having to isolate, you know, and so um, I'm really hoping that uh, just for the, the better health of our people and overall outcome, I, I hope that we can actually uh, reconnect and gather with our people again soon. Okay. Uh, and for the powwow crowd, all-time favorite men's fancy dancer and all-time favorite drum group. Well, I, you know, I, I danced fancy for many years, and and some of my great favorites, uh, I would have to say, would be a guy. Um, his name was. Uh, I grew up hearing his name a lot when I was a young boy. His name was Tyrone Head. He was out of South Dakota, and he was one of the. Uh, people of the Northern Plains area that was, was well noted. Um, that was in the sixties and seventies, uh, moving through some time. I, I don't know. I, I would say overall, I mean, there's, there's some great ones, you know, um, you know, Poncho Brady will, will always be, uh, Saunders Bernstel, uh, you know, um, some, some of the guys with a lot of footwork, a lot of movement, a lot of agility, you know, um, you know, Roy Crazy Horse Bison, you know, uh, also was a, was a long time, uh, you know, fancy dancer that I always looked up to growing up. So, you know, some of those guys are, you know, there's a lot of new guys out there doing well. Uh, Teddy Bison, some of these guys, they got some, some, some great agility. So, yeah. Um, uh, so, sorry to cut you off there. That just reminded me of when you were saying, you spoke of uh, Poncho Brady. And uh, I remember, I'm a Regina guy. And uh, I remember uh, some years back, quite a while back, I don't remember what year it was, honestly, but uh, there was a men's fancy uh, special and they had the spot or the solo dances at the end. And uh, that was the that was the first time that I had seen uh, Poncho Brady dance. And uh, I remember I was sitting beside a deceased uh, Les Goforth. And uh, I had it. Uh, I had it uh, recorded at the time, and you could hear that crowd was going crazy, like they were at some kind of sporting event. And uh, it was, it, it, yeah, for sure, de definitely all the respect in the world uh, for that kind of talent that that can engage an audience like that. Uh, and, and so, what about drum groups? What, what's your favorite drum group? Uh, I, you know, it's uh, my favorite all-time Southern would be Kozad. Uh, yeah. Favorite all-time uh, contemporary group would probably be Stony Park. And then my favorite all-time um, original or, um, you know, no word singing would probably be uh, uh, it would be probably Badlands or you know, Porcupine, Eagle Whistle, some of those groups like that, Mandarin, you know. But uh, that's it. Yeah. That's a tough question to answer, isn't it? You bet. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. As you're going through that, I'm thinking, like, how do you even – how do, how do you even gauge that? And as a, as, as a, uh, a singer, a longtime singer myself, I'm not as involved as I was due to other, uh, other commitments that I have in my life and my career and that type of thing, uh, but still really follow powwow. And my son Cage uh, is really uh, on that powwow trail as well. And uh, I would have to say uh, for myself, it'd probably be Northern Cree. And the reason why, I guess, is, is you see the longevity. You see a lot of those same faces uh, over the years uh, in, in the same group. And then also, I remember back to the Skametsin powwows. Uh, I don't remember exactly what year it was, but I remember seeing uh, Northern Cree uh, performing that. They've got that one crow hop with the paws in it. And I'd never heard that song before. And I remember they just rocked that song. And there was all sorts of money uh, being thrown onto the drum and, and, and stuff like that. So ever since that, that is, it probably kind of been my, my, my favorite drum group all along. But anyways. Oh, definitely, yeah. Yeah, they got, the, they got the people on their side for sure. And I mean, I enjoy their music as well. They get everybody hopping and grooving. And there's a great vibe always coming from Northern Cree for sure. For sure. So uh, thanks a lot for being with me uh, here, Donnie. Uh, with that, uh, I'll turn that over to you to see if you have uh, any last comments. Oh, well, just thank you, uh, Weibo, and thank you for uh, just doing the good work and just keeping people uh, busy and just uh, documenting some of this uh, historical moment. And hopefully uh, in due time, we can all look back at this and say, hey, you know, uh, it taught us something and, and hopefully we can uh, all come out with our relatives healthy and safe. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Donnie. All right. Take care, Weibo. Take care.